Come on in the room, y'all. It's gonna be a good one. I'm gonna give it 50 seconds. I'm gonna get started. So we'll get started in a few minutes. I'm gonna count down my 60 second rule. I'm gonna get started. And those who can't catch it now, I'll catch it on the replay. I love this song. I'll turn it off in a second. Alright. Alright, y'all, we're gonna get started in a few seconds. See, I don't want my video to get blocked, so I'm not gonna I mean my my yeah to get blocked. So but that for those who don't know was Isabel Davis in High as the Sky. Well, let me just double check. Hold on. Wide as the Sky. There, I love this song. I love that song. Okay, so that's Isabel Davis, Wide as the Sky. All right, let's get started. And I'll just, um, whoever can, can catch you on the replay for those who will uh, tune in to this later. Maybe this is your first time with one of my Facebook lives. My name is Samaria Maria Colbert. I am the founder of Kingdom Creative Counseling. I am a licensed therapist. I'm a published author and I help people to get free spiritually, emotionally, and mentally free through Jesus Christ. Let's get started today. Okay, when y'all come in, y'all make sure y'all like it, share it. And catch it on the replay because it's going to be really, really good. So I've been doing a series um, talking about uh, strategies for ministry leaders and business leaders. I've been doing some different things. In between that time, there are two categories by which I will do uh, my lives. One is in the area of emotional healing and mental health uh, uh, recovery because I'm a licensed therapist as state. And the other one is in the realm of business and ministry, different things, because that's the realm I'm a part of as well. So I have different clients that I work with in this office. I actually just got finished with a client uh, maybe about 15 minutes ago. And then I also uh, work with other business and ministry leaders, believe it or not, not necessarily uh, and counseling, but also in other areas of just collaboration, okay? And so it's really important that we have this discussion. We talk about kingdom conversations, the purpose of this kingdom conversation that we're going to have today. is We're talking about collaboration, conversations, and coordination. There is a difference, okay? And so um, and one of the things the Lord began to speak to me, I believe it was last year, another area of an assignment, he began to talk to about Talk to me about collaboration and how God will connect us with the right people. Okay. And that is true. You are never so deep, so anointed that you don't have, you are too deep to uh, connect with people. I had a, a, a pastor uh, say to me, not say to me, I uh, heard of a pastor say recently on, uh, actually on YouTube and hello cousin uh, on YouTube. And he was saying, you are not so anointed that you, 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 you outside the will of God. You are not so anointed that you so you too anointed to go to church. You're just not that anointed. Okay. You're not so anointed that you isolate yourself from people because you're just that deep. And so it's really important to understand when you're trying to pursue purpose and vision, there is a season. It's just a season when you isolate and you may be by yourself. You may be, uh, it may be you, your, your laptop, your computer, and you're strategizing. You may be, um, just sitting there and you're, you're formulating, uh, your vision, but then there comes a time when you're in manifestation stage and then God is going to connect you with people because you can't do it all by yourself. Now, when you first thought off you everything, you're the administrative assistant, you're the, uh, you're the marketing person, you're the IT person, you're the person that buys supplies. I mean, you, 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 you just it all, you it all. <laughs> I know that ain't correct, but y'all, you are everything. But as you continue to grow and, and move on, God will connect you with right people who have skills and abilities to help you accomplish your goal. And so I I want to talk to people about that and I said something in my previous lives that is very 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 important and I think it's really important when we talk today so I'm gonna reiterate it just because someone wants to be in your space does not mean they are qualified to be there I'm gonna say that again just because someone wants to be in your space does not mean they're qualified, nor does it mean they have the capacity to do so. Now, people get mad, they get offended, they have all kinds of problems when you say no, or you know, this is not the right time, or they are they trying to connect with you, and it's a no, but because they don't understand that you are not qualified 
to be in my space. Now that sounds bougie, but I got scripture to back up everything that I'm going to say. This is what I also said last time. As you begin to grow, as you begin to have influence, as you begin to grow your business, your ministry, whatever platform God has given you, will there are so many different people who want to connect with you. Some people want to connect with you because they see your influence. Some people want to connect with you because they see you're generally a nice person. Some people want to connect with you in friendship. Some people want to connect with you because they have a vision they want you to see. So people want to connect with you, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. That is a part of human nature. We are created for relationships. We are created for collaboration. We are created for friendships. So God creates us for collaboration, he creates us to interact with one another. But again, you have to want to discern and know who this person is and whether or not they are going to be a distraction or whether or not they are going to be a benefit to your life. And one of the issues that I've had, honestly, in the past was I've always been a giver. And so I would connect with people and I would be sacrificing for people and giving to people and they wouldn't even hardly remotely, even remotely think to make the same sacrifice for me. So knowing for me that I'm a giver, one of my criteria for when I con connect with people is that I'm a giver. I don't want to connect with someone who has a handout because they just want something. I've done that before. You understand what I'm saying? I've done that. And so some people love you, but they don't have capacity for you. There's some people that they, they are cool to hang out with and go to the movies with, but they're not, they're not okay to be business partners with. Your friends can be great friends. That does not mean they're good business partners. Your friends can have a good vision for their life. That does not mean that they're supposed to connect with you in vision. Okay. And so I want to break down this, um, this topic because you want to connect with right people. You want to connect with the right people. And what I'm going to do is uh, tell you certain questions that I ask and certain questions you want to ask when you want to collaborate with people. How many more know the scripture said, well, two or more are gathered in my name that I will be amongst them. So the scripture tells us that agreement is very powerful, right? Proverbs 27, 17 says, iron sharpens iron. Okay, now you can't be a uh, uh, plastic trying to sharpen iron, right? It's not going to work. You can't be, I don't know, bronze. Or I don't know, <clears throat> I don't know, cubic zirconia diamond trying to trying to um trying to sharpen iron. It doesn't work, right? So you have to have people that have the same grind, the same hustle, the same similar uh, attributes that you already possess. So that iron sharpens iron. Let me tell you a little secret about me. I don't connect with everybody who wants to connect with me, but I never require something of someone that I don't already possess. Right? If I'm a giver, you got to be a giver. If, I, if I'm working hard, you got to be working hard. Because some people are allergic to work. You see that they see the extra. They just allergic to work. Right? They just want the influence, but they don't want the work. My pastor say everyone wants to uh, be with you. when uh, uh, No one wants to help you climb the mountain. Because that's hard work. They want to see you. Uh, they want to be on the top with you. But they're they not trying to do no work. Right? So you have to connect with the right people. Ephesians 4 says... Two are better than one, right? So two are better than one. So you have somebody and they're like, well, I don't need nobody and none of my need me. This is me and Jesus. Nine times out of 10, that's coming from a place of hurt. That's coming from a, a place of self-protection. That's coming from a place of, of fear of connecting with people. But uh, but here's the thing: when you're a whole, when you're when you are when you love God, when you're a whole person, you you welcome the idea of connection. It does not mean that everybody who want to connect with you, you just show everyone come on in. It don't <laughs> it don't work that way, particularly when it comes to business and ministry. And I've said this before: I don't have time to slow up so you can show up. I don't have. I'm not gonna. You know, you we can we can you know we can do that all day long. I I'm not gonna slow up for you to show up. Right, and I'm not, and sometimes you don't. If you try and deal with someone and they're not vested, they're not sacrificed, they're not doing the same level of things that you're doing. What you have to do is slow up for them to show up, or you gotta stop, slow down, turn around. I said this before. Turn around. I said, "Hey, wait a minute. Come on with it." And you gotta go all the way back and try to get a hold of them and try to bring them with you because they are dead weight. So everybody that want to connect with you don't mean they're ready. Okay, and you gotta be okay. This is me. This is Samaria. This is why I'm, I gotta be okay with saying no. I used to not be okay with saying no. Now I say it very easily. And if I say no, I mean no. I ain't gotta give you no explanations as to why. No simply means no. You can think whatever you want to think about me, spread all kinds of lies, rumors. Don't bother me. No, never mind. I really don't care. 
No still means no, because at the end of the day, you still have to understand what God has placed in you, the vision that God has for you. And there's some people that they are genuinely and they're nice people. They do not have capacity. The other people that you can clearly, not me, I can clearly see that you are distracted all by yourself. So if I'm here being focused and I can see with my eyes, I said before, I'm not going, I'm not dreaming, I'm not having a vision, I'm not going to fast for 40 days and 40 nights. I can see with my natural and physical and emotional and spiritual eyes that you are distracted on your own. You best believe you're not going to be distracted around me. So here's the thing. Time is an investment, just as much as money. If you waste my money, I can get that back. But if you waste my time, I may not be able to get that back. So you have to be strategic about your time and strategic about your partners, okay? I'm going to try to get through this really quickly. So I'm going to break this down as it relates to like um, you uh, uh, maybe an interview. Now, I heard a man and God say this at my church um, a couple weeks ago, and it's so profound. I got to say it again. It's simple, but it's good. He said, you must interview everyone who wants a position in your life. You must interview Everyone who wants a position in your life. Now, I know that sounds strange, but it's absolutely 100% true. Everybody that comes into your life and they really want a position in your life, you have to interview them to meet, to see if they meet the qualifications. So I'm going to break this down like a regular interview for a regular job and how it relates to life. I was actually to have a conversation with someone a couple years ago and, the, and they said something about like, well, this ain't an interview. Now I was like, well, I was thinking back on my own. Yes, it is an interview. Okay. Yes, it is. Because I'm interviewing you to see if you qualify or if you meet the qualifications of what I am looking for for my life. Now watch this. Just like any other interview, you're applying for a job. You don't get to decide the qualifications. You the potential employee, right? Don't get to um, define the terms of what that employer is looking for, right? You don't get to say, well, I want this job and I believe that my qualification should be X, 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 X. No, the employee, the employer who is in the power position defines the standards and the qualifications of what they are looking for to determine whether or not you fit in their company, right? So the same way with people, the same way with Samaria, because I'm going to tell you about me, only because I only I know me most of all. Okay, I have certain standards, I have certain qualifications, and I have certain things that I need for you to have if you're going to have a position in my life, right? And you don't get to define what my qualifications are. These are my qualifications. Then my qualifications are not superficial. Right. This is just me. They're not superficial. They're based upon where I am right now. It's based upon the vision, the plan and the purpose that God has purpose for me to do. And it's, and it's based upon where God is taking me. Right. So you, 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 <clears throat> you being a nice person has nothing to do with whether or not I want you have a position in my life. Just like if you go to a job interview and that job and they keep at that job interview or, or, or the employer says, uh, why should you hire us? For, for this company? Why, why why should we choose you amongst others? You can't say, well, um, I'm, I'm a real nice person. And that's it. They're going to look at you like, okay, so you want us to hire you, invest our time and our money in you because you're a, a nice person? And you wouldn't think to do that. Guess what? You need to do that in real life. Like you could say, why, why should you have a position? Why should I uh, collaborate with Samaria if you want to? You may not even care. I mean, I don't, you know, doesn't make me know that I don't, you know, you may not care. Why should I have a position in Samaria's life or business or partnership or whatever? I'm a nice person. I'm still going to look at you like that employee and be like, so you want me to invest time and effort of my time and you, because you a nice person. Okay. All right. Let me know how that goes, because it's an absolute no. Mm -mm, no. Okay. When you're in business, you got to be, you just got to be like, you got to, you got to be okay saying no, right? Because again, as influence increases, as success increases, you have so many people coming at you and you want people that bring value to your life and you have to know what it is. So again, prior to that, you have to know what your qualification and your standards are for collaboration. I, Samaria, and you do this when you're connecting with people in ministry and business, even in friendships. What are the qualifications and standards for collaboration? I already told you about me. For me, I don't want anybody else with a handout. 
I am a giver. So qualification for me for 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 friendship in general is um you have to be a giver. Not that I want anything from you because I'm never going to ask. But I'm tired of people with the handout, right? So I also for me my personal qualifications are I don't like people who talk a lot. I, I just, I don't, I'm not impressed by people. Because I've seen people, they just, and they think I'm impressed by, and I'm just like, <sighs> I'm not going to say that. I'm going to be like, because <laughs> you know, the therapist, we know how to have our therapist face. He's like, hmm, tell me what you think about that. But I don't like people always got something to say, you got a whole bunch of opinions. I just, the more you talk, the more stupid you sound to me. I'm like, oh God, really? Did you just, did you just say that out of your mouth? I don't like people that have diarrhea of the mouth. They just, da, 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 da. and half the time, you ain't even saying that they got make sense. Again, I'm just using myself as an example. The only person I can speak about is myself. So when you're a coordinator, you have a vision or plan or purpose for your life. And whatever capacity, you have to know what standards, what characteristics, of people that you want. And I also don't like loud people. I'm a quiet person. I'm a drama free person. So if you laugh, hey, nah, 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 you may be good for laugh for about 15 minutes of me. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I got to go. Oh my God. Like I just, it's just not, <laughs> it's just not my idea of a fun time. I'm more of a calm, you know, I also don't want people who constantly are complaining about random stuff. I just, you know what I'm saying? But again, that comes with knowing you and being able to say, oh, you know, you are a really nice person. I really, uh, God bless you. But you, we're not a good fit because you would really irritate me. <laughs> and that's in this friendship. We need not even talk about business and ministry because I got some, listen, again, and everything I have, everything I qualify, I, I, most of the time I possess when it comes to characters because I have worked hard for everything that I have. Oh. Okay, so click that. I'm just telling you because a lot of times we want other people to have certain qualifications that we don't possess. And that's for the birds. You have to have value within yourself to know who you are, what you want, what you already have done, and then say, this is what I want based upon who I already am and what I've already accomplished. Okay, so we still talk about kingdom conversation. What are your qualifications and standards for collaboration? Okay. Uh, for those of uh, people who do ministry development or business leadership development, you need to define that relationship up front. Okay. Define that relationship up front. Okay. Because sometimes people have a different version of collaboration. Now, let me explain to this uh, why. So first for me, and I'm going to explain that in a minute. For me, when I talk about collaboration, I want to know what is the vision that you have for your life and is it in line with mine? What is the vision you have for your life and is it in line with mine? And then where are you as it relates to that vision? Now, there's a part of your vision where you are in dreaming stage, you're at the preparing stage. There's another stage where you're at manifestation. There's another stage where you're at just you're at manifestation, but now you're growing to the next level. So I am that at manifestation stage and I'm growing to the next level. However, if you are at the preparing dreaming stage, you're not ready for collaboration with me or partnering with me because we're not at the same stage. You're at, you're, we're at different places. I'm, I'm, I'm above you, right? Not above you in life. I'm just saying I'm above you as far as where I am, as far as my vision is concerned. So you can't partner with me when you are not, you know what I'm saying? Well, I'm the one who's doing all this. What you really need is a mentor, okay? You don't need to partner with me. You need me to mentor you. Right? So you have to define that relationship up front because sometimes people have these really strange ideas about how you should interact with them and they have no clue what it takes to build. See, if I'm doing all this sacrificing and this is what I've sacrificed, what happens if I've sacrificed so much, I know what it takes to be where I am and to go to the next level. You're at the dream stage. You have no idea what it costs you. You see what I'm saying? And so you don't need, <clears throat> why would I partner with someone? We're not equally yoked. Right. So again, we have to define up front what this is and whether or not you even qualify for that. If you've been preparing and the preparing and dreaming and planning stage for the last 15 years, you probably not, you're not someone that I, I want to invest my time in. Right. You just not. Let me tell you why. Cause I'm not at that stage now. I'm at manifestation. And if I try to bring you down, now I'm going back to what I said at the beginning. You slowing me up. I got to slow up for you to show up. Right. OK, this makes good sense to me. All right. Uh, OK, people uh, you connect with must be in line with your vision. I said that I said, uh, what is their previous experience? What is your previous? I said this before. You cannot ask for a seat at the table if you don't have anything in your hand. And what is in your hand is not money. It is skill. It is talent. It is ability. And, it's, and this for me, for some Mary, most of all, a history or a habitual uh, 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 some evidence of completed work. I'm going to say it again. 
evidence of completed work, right? This is, you have to have some experience, like every job. When you want a job, you can get a job anyway. McDonald's will hire anybody for the most part, okay? Subway will hire anybody. But when we talk about a career, when you're trying to get big money, you're trying to get a career, they're not trying to just hire anybody to, to, to take your order, right? A career <coughs> is someone who has talent, skill, ability, and previous experience, right? Same way with me and, and, and partnership and collaboration. What is your previous, not, not just I've been through a lot of things in my life and I learned a lot. I'm talking about when it comes to your vision, <laughs> your plan, what have you completed? What book have you written? What program have you written? What, what is your plan of action? I'll give you an example. Um, I reached out to someone who said they had this big vision and big vision for their life. I reached out to them. What well, nothing. Nothing. What well, nothing. But they were talking good, right? Reach out to another person um, concerning their business, their plan. I had a two-minute conversation with them, and from that two-minute conversation, I know who they were, their background, what they did, and how to make a referral. Two-minute conversation. Two-minute conversation. You see what I'm saying? So my point I make with that is when you have experience and when you know what you know and you have a, a systematic history of completed work, you can bet, bam, this is what it is. This is what I did. This is what I do. This is how, this is how I carry things. Period. Do you want to rock with Samaria? Guess what? I need to have known your previous experience and I'm not going to have a whole hour conversation with you. Two minutes. You get two minutes. But guess what? I just said at the beginning, my name is Samaria Cole. I'm a licensed therapist. That's experience. I'm a published author. Experience. Um, and I help people to get free spiritual. See that? I'm telling you my, I'm telling you who I am based upon what I actually have. So again, for me, again, I'm just telling you my qualifications. Everybody that you want to collaborate with in any capacity, okay, but they have some level of success, they 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 are want to know about your previous experience, particularly if you get a certain age. I'm 30 something years old. I'll be 40 in a few years. I got I got a few, I got a couple of years left in my 30s. Couple of years. Not a whole lot, though. And I'll be 40. So I'm not talking about you 18, 19, 20, you fresh out your mom's house and you just trying to figure it out. Right? I'm talking about you grown and you see what I'm saying? Once you get a certain age and you've been talking of certain things, you've been pursuing certain things, you should have a list of completed work, a previous experience for anything. Even friendships, believe it or not. <coughs> Even friendships. Okay? All right. So again, I'm going to say this again, but being a nice person does not qualify you for position in my life. Period. Point blank. I think it's great that you are a nice person. I promise you, you probably will never be a person not more, more nicer than me. I am. I'm. A, I am generally a nice person. I have learned not to be so nice. I've learned to speak my truth. I've learned not to to be unbothered and not care so much about what people think about me. Um, I used to be mad at myself because I was too nice to people. No I'm good. Want to take advantage of me? I'm not that way anymore. I can speak up very fine. But, but guess what? Being a nice person does not qualify you for anything. I, I get so shocked. These questions, I'm a nice person. I don't understand. Okay. Come on, Facebook. Don't break up on me now. <laughs> Facebook is clicking out. I, I'm a nice person. I, and you should just... No. <laughs> no. <laughs> just like, like I said, that's like that job. They're not going to just hand you... Can, uh, they're not going to... Investing to you, uh, put you on a on a tap. You know what I'm saying? No one's gonna give you a job because you're nice. They're really not. And uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, being a nice person helps you to stay in position. If you nasty at your work or you nasty at your business or you nasty to your clients, no one's gonna deal with you anyway. But that does not qualify you for promotion. It really does not. So get over that whole delusion. I'm a nice person, so you should hang out with me. No, I shouldn't. Okay. All right. Keep it moving. All right. Two, categorize what position they are to play in your life. Categorize what position they are to play in your life. Okay. Sometimes people come in and they want to partner with you, but they're not ready for that. And this is what a man of God told us at church a few weeks ago as well. It says two equal partners. When you're partnered with someone, two equal partners, right? Bring talent, skill, ability, uh, knowledge, in some cases, finances, 
to the table with the expectation of an increase of 50%. Um, I got to give the person Elder Marcus Battle at New JC uh, gave us this definition. Okay, so I'm giving him credit. Okay, so equal partners. That means you are bringing something to the table. Now, let me say this. Sometimes the person may not necessarily be equal when it comes to um, exactly what they bring. Like you may be really good at accounting and numbers and I don't know, scientific knowledge. That's not accounting and stuff is not my not my genre, okay? That's not my gift. But I may be better at um, at clinical stuff and doing um, our interviews and, and stuff. That I need. So we may not necessarily bring the exact same thing to the table. So I'm not saying that. I'm saying you do have to bring uh, some type of something to the table that makes you an equal partner. And this is really important when I talk about defining relationships because sometimes people say, I want to partner with you and they don't, and they, 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 that's not what they what they are. Right. They, they, you know, if you are, if we're in a relationship, not even a relationship, if um, I'm the one that's doing all the sacrificing, right, because I'm the one with the resources, the skills, what I really am is investing in you as a, men, a mentor. I'm developing you. I'm training you. You're not, this is not a partnership. Right. I'm training you. I'm developing you so you can fulfill your vision. But this is not a partnership. OK. And this is really important you define that because people will say, I want to partner you. They feel like they can connect with you like that. And they're not, you know what I'm saying? They're allergic to work. They don't have steady completed. This, I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm not trying to throw shade, but I had people like this. You don't work nowhere. You, 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 you have never completed literally anything. You see what I'm saying? Um, you still at the dreaming stage and it's nothing wrong with like being at the dream and vision stage. But again, for me, I have to define how this relationship or this collaboration is supposed to go. Just because you say, I, I, you may think all day long, I can, I can, I can, but you're not making the sacrifices, right? Um, so you know what I'm saying? So you have to define what the, this relationship is. They may say, I want to partner with you. And they had no capacity for that. And I said previously in my, my other lives, when it comes to kingdom conversations, you cannot put people in positions they have no capacity for. And a lot of times what we do, we put people in, in positions because they're charisma, because their personality, they're likable people, they're nice, and then they end up ruining things <clears throat> or they end up being on my on the therapist's office because they end up having spasms and breakdowns because you try to put them in positions that they were not qualified for. This is why God processes us. And you have to define for this person, listen, I hear what you say, you want to partner with me, but you have no idea what that what that entails. I'm just because some people be like, well I can do what you do. Well, listen, I ain't got it. I ain't even gonna argue what you wanted. You know, I may I know I make it look easy. You can my God have at it. I mean have at it. This ain't you know what I'm saying this ain't a competition. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying I'm the only person I'm in competition is me. So they may say, I can do what you do because they don't see the behind the scenes work. So you have to define a relationship when people try to connect with you. Okay, you want to partner with me, but listen, this thing, you you went way over your head. <laughs> you went way over your head. However, this is more of a mental relationship. And for me, I've said it at, in 2018, I said I was going to take on more mentors, a mentee, excuse me, and I am not at this time, in my, not at, right at this moment because of my schedule. Okay, so you have to define for that person the relationship, whether or not they are going to agree with it. Let me give you an example of this, y'all. Uh, I'm going to be very discreet, but I had an issue with, I had someone I was working with and they, they, they literally thought that we were at the same place. I'm, you know, I got, I got this office, I'm paying these bills, my business is growing. I took someone on not to partner with them because I knew that's not where they were at, but to be an assistant to me. Okay. They were supposed to assist who me, right? Okay. So we get to a business meeting and the assistant <clears throat> apparently thinks we are business partners. I don't know how that happened. I don't know how that <laughs> how that happened. <laughs> and they start popping out with the mouth. This is why I need you to do this, I need you to do this, I need you. I'm like, excuse you? I ain't got no experience. <laughs> you are the assistant. Nothing wrong with that. But you don't go into a meeting for a business that's not yours, that you don't make sacrifice for, you don't pay enough for nothing, nothing. you're not helping it to grow. You are supposed to assist me and you popping out with the mouth mouth telling the other business leader what they need to do concerning our business, which is not our business was my business. I was like, and it put me at a, at a, at a tough spot. Cause I'm sitting there like, <laughs> cause you know, you have a business meeting. You don't want to sit there and be like, I'm professional. But part of you want to be like, who, who are you? <laughs> I didn't say that though. I had to keep it real cool. But part of me was like, so this person has not qualified or defined this relationship. Again, the fact you are the assistant, you don't go into the assistant meeting 
popping off like we business partners telling people what they need to do concerning their business. And then the stuff that they were saying was off because again, that wasn't their role. They didn't, they didn't have any experience trying to conduct this type of meeting. Or if they had sat down and said, I would explain to them, I wouldn't expect them to be popping off like the mouth because what they were asking the person to do, I would never do. That's that's just bad business. I would never. That's not my, how I roll. But because they didn't have any experience, they just thought oh, I work with Samaria. But it, and I'm just like, and never said anything to me about what they were expecting. And I was like, you know, what I'm saying, hold up. <laughs> that's what I was thinking, and I had to keep it calm. So I've learned again. That's one thing that I learned the hard way to find the relationship up front. It's nothing wrong with being an assistant. Guess what? I wasn't an assistant per se per to someone. <clears throat> um. In my development stage, but I had done a lot of administrative work. I know how to do administrative. Am I an administrative assistant now? Absolutely not. But I've done that. So I know what, what that relationship defines. But I had to learn from the beginning to define the relationship up front and what the protocol is concerning that. Okay? So you must discern, again, connections, character and character flaws. Character and character flaws. Now, here's the thing. Everyone has flaws about them. Everyone has character about them. So when someone says, I see your flaws, it doesn't necessarily mean they're looking down upon you. It just means I have to see areas of your weakness to determine whether or not I want to work with you or not. There's some character flaws, and I'll talk about in a minute, I won't work with. Like not having a teachable spirit, but I'll talk about that in a minute, okay? So what is character? The character is the quality of your mental, emotional, or spiritual disposition. The quality of your mental, your emotional, or your spiritual disposition. This is what defines what is in your heart first and how you interact with others. You know what's in someone's heart based upon how they interact with others. I'm going to make that plain in a minute. Okay, let me give you this story. This is the story my pastor told us, um, I'm going to say maybe two years ago. And it's about relationships, but I'm going to relate it to business relationships, okay? It's going to make sense in a minute. So he said that <clears throat> you can have a man and he sees a woman who is technically out of his league, right? He sees a woman, she's technically out of his league, but because he is confident in himself, he goes up to the woman and says, hey, can I take you out to dinner? Now she may turn him down because that's her choice. She may say, no, I'm not interested in going out to dinner with you, right? True story. Not true story. This story tells me. I'm not interested in going out to dinner with you. Because he is secure within himself, he walks away and it's okay because people have the right to say yes or no. However, he said another brother is insecure about himself. He sees a woman that is out of his league. He walks up to her and says, hey, miss, can I take you out to dinner? She says, no, I'm not interested in taking you out because that's her choice, right? Because she says no to him. Now he's offended. And he goes popping off at the mouth and talks to her, cursing her out. Why? Because he is insecure with himself. People can say yes and say no to you. They don't owe you any explanations. But when you are secure within yourself, it doesn't, you're not offended. You know what I'm saying? You're not popping off at the mouth. You're not trying to offend people. You're not cursing nobody out. You also are not insulting their intelligence because they don't want to hang out with you. You just said, okay. But sometimes, listen, this is a marriage. I may not be for you and you may not be for me. You have a right to say no. I'm not going to go to nobody like that anyway. But you have a right to be like, I don't really like Samaria. Okay, that's your, that's your opinion. I don't, I like me. I'm secure with me. Have a wonderful day. If I see you in the grocery store, I speak. You know what I'm saying? It's those people that are insecure when they get a no. <clears throat> they start popping off at the mouth. Well, so, you know, you had no love. You insecure. How does it relate to business relationships? How does it relate to collaboration and even friends? Is that insecurity disqualifies you for, for collaboration of any kind. Insecurity disqualifies you from collaboration of any kind. Let me tell you this. As a business leader, ministry leader, you have to know how to handle a no gracefully, right? Gracefully. Because sometimes it's not a no Forever, it's a no right, not right now. So what you may know, maybe that woman was busy. Maybe she won't be bothered that day. Maybe she's got to make went through a breakup. You don't know that, right? But because you handle yourself gracefully, maybe you meet that person six months down the line and you say, "Hey, I still want to take you out to dinner." Uh, I know you can say no. I just want to tell you. And she might be like, "Sure," but then you got to do this popping off at the mouth. He may see her six months later. He may say, "Listen, ma'am, I still want to take you out to dinner." She may, be, she may, she may be like, "No, not in your black life. You better not. You, you will never. 
I had people, and this is drawing to speak good as truth, because I had to say no right now. They were disrespectful. And guess what? It, it was a no, not right now, but now it's a no. Absolutely never forever. Ever, ever. You understand? Because you ain't got but one time to disrespect me. One time. And I don't pop out with now. You but first I did it. I ain't got, I'm not defensive. I'm like, okay. But that's what okay. Gotcha. 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 So now it was a no not right now. It had nothing to do with the person. It was a no not right now because I, that's not I, I can't do it right now based upon what I got going on right now. But it was a no, it was a yes, maybe, you know, a couple months down the line. But now, because I've been disrespected, it's a no for ever, ever. And I'm not mad at nobody. I just know, you know the character of someone when they, how they handle disappointment. If you pop up, and I, you know, that's fine. God bless you. Thank you for showing me who you really were. It's a no forever. Ever, ever. Ever, ever. Right? So this is a heck of a business. And I don't have time to go into detail. I had contracts that I was not approved for the first time. When I first got my business, it was literally like in the middle of the year. My office is like in the middle of the year. And I didn't know how contracts work. I later found out that contracts, oftentimes they have certain times when contracts are open. There are certain times when, when you're more available to use that. So I've learned how to say, no, thank you. Every contract that I, when I first started my business, a lot of people don't know, I applied for a whole bunch of contracts. I was denied most of them. The next year, literally within months of, no, I think, July, I started applying for contracts. I think by that January, I reapplied for all of them. I got accepted to all of them, all of them, and then more. 16 different contracts I was approved for in 2018. 16, right? And so I say all that to say, not to brag, but I have learned the art of handling no gracefully. Say, no, thank you so much for your time. I had four major contracts, right, that I applied for when I first, first started my business, and it was no on all of them. I applied for one of them twice. It was a no on all of them. Guess what? I just got approved for all of them, all four of these major contracts this year. You have to know how to handle a no gracefully. Also, you don't know who knows people because believe it or not, people talk. And they don't necessarily talk about you and your character, but they may say, hey, you know someone who needs such and such? Or you know someone who needs such and such? But because you didn't handle the no gracefully in business, they're not going to call your name and recommend people to the, to you. I'm someone, I, I because I have a lot of business and ministry leaders, believe it or not, that I counsel in this office. Or I, I just meet people. When you're in business, you meet other business owners. And I may not have what they need, but I can say, hey, call this person. I know that person. Or, and call this person. I, I gave an example for um, uh, a few lives ago. I had another person who wanted to start something. I didn't have the time to tell them. I didn't think that was my area of expertise. But I knew my other uh, neighbor in here. She's excellent at what she does. But I sent her to her. Now he's now he's getting his stuff together. I think he has already. I don't. I haven't followed the case. But she took him on. Got everything he needed. It wasn't me. So you don't know who knows people, right? So you have to handle no gracefully because sometimes it's out of time and it's out of season. Sometimes it's the right time, but it's not the right season. Sometimes it's the right season, but it's not the right time. Sometimes you just gotta wait a little bit longer. But because you again, you don't have not have, know how to handle no gracefully. And as a business owner, if I don't really want anything from you in the first place, right? I didn't come to you for nothing because I don't pursue anybody. I have pursued contracts. I don't pursue. You said, but two things I don't pursue is people, and I don't invite myself anywhere. I don't. I just don't do it. I don't invite myself anywhere. But because I don't, you know, I don't need anything from the people that are asking me or stuff. Um, I've learned that how people respond is how they really are. If you handle it, no, you, you know what I'm saying? Learn, I promise you, it all comes around. It all comes around. And when people tell you no, they don't have to sit there and tell you why. I have told my clients this too. I have said, listen, when you say no, you can't. No, you can't borrow. No, you can't have. You just can say no. You don't have to come behind it. Well, you're not been really busy. Not just been stressed out. You got to do all that. It's a no. And if you are secure with who you are, you can handle no. If you're not, you can't handle no. Then you be you you, you being messy. Guess what? Samaria doesn't do it. Guess what? She don't deal with messy people. Don't do it. That's okay though. Anyway, so learn how to handle no gracefully. Other questions that I ask myself, I don't ask the person, I discern this. One, are they teachable? I, I can't partner with you if you're not teachable. And I 
also cannot mentor you because you have to be able to handle critique. And I said this before, when I get in the room full of people who know more than me, who are more successful than me, I shut my mouth. I'm not doing all this talk and give you a whole bunch of opinions of what I did, 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 did. No, I'm Samaria. I'm a business owner. Keep it moving. You have to have a teachable spirit. You will not grow or elevate in any area of your life or ministry if you cannot be teachable. So if you cannot be teachable with me, I don't want to work with you. I don't want to deal with you. I don't even want to be friends with you for real. I mean, I'm just being honest. Because the type of friends I have, I, you can tell me when I'm wrong, and I can tell you when you're wrong. But you can't, if you can't handle being told, and I, I'm never going to disrespect anybody. I'm never, you know, you, you, you. <coughs> but I've learned this one the hard way, too. If you can't tell people the truth in love, though, and if you cannot receive truth and wisdom in love, we're not gonna collaborate because you have to be teachable. You have to be teachable. It just you don't know it all. You're not so that you're not so deep that you don't. You you just it's just not. You have to be teachable. Uh, are they easily offended? Are they offensive? Just because you have a thought does not mean you need to say it. You can't have a business or ministry, even if you have superior knowledge in certain areas. You cannot be offensive to people because they don't have the knowledge space that you have. And I've learned sometimes people want to talk and they want to just throw things out there intentionally trying to trying to uh, trigger like some kind of debate or to go back and forth. They are offensive intentionally, right? Proverbs 12, 18, I'm reading from New Living Translation says, some make cutting remarks, but the words of the wise bring healing. Some people make cutting remarks because they need validation. You just put that on out there because you need validation. Well, hope you got all the likes you got, y'all the hugs you needed. Now you are proven that you're not ready for collaboration, right? Okay, do this, submit to godly authority. That's going to be in my life in friendships and business partnerships and uh, mentorships and in life. If we do not submit to a godly leader or a godly church, we cannot con we can't connect. Because if you can't submit to godly leadership outside of collaboration or connection, we don't, we're not going to have a good, you, you're not going to be a good partner. Because you have to learn the art of submission to people who know more than you. This is why if I'm trying to mention somebody and you think you know it all and you can't listen and you can't submit to someone in your own life, it's just not gonna work. It's just not gonna work. It ain't gonna work. It is it's not gonna work. Okay, you have to understand protocol, right? You have to understand protocol and rank. You have to, and it does not mean you look less than, but you gotta find out where you are. And like if if, if you got a supervisor, that person is your supervisor. That's not your friend. And I think my ministry development people, my leadership development people, you have to determine whether or not you want to be someone's friend versus their leader. You can't always have it both ways. You can't do it at the same time if you can, right? My clients are not my friends. I know a whole lot of intimate stuff about their lives. And I would never tell anybody I'm, I'm obligated by confidentiality. I know birthdays. I know wedding anniversaries. I know arguments. I mean, stuff. But they're not my friends. Do you understand? Because it is not, that's not the role. Plus, it's a conflict of interest anyway. But they're not my friends. I'm here to help to bring them out of a certain place. But we're not friends. I don't turn around and say, well, let me tell you what I was going through today, girl. It was hard. I was just really depressed. You know what I'm saying? That would be inappropriate. So you have to understand protocol. You have to respect. You have to know when you are in over your head. If you are approaching a business owner who is successful and you don't really have a business, you have to understand protocol. We're not friends. You understand? You are asking me. It's, 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 it's business. It's nothing personal. It's business. Right? And you have to understand and come with humility. I come with humility. Humility will get you so much farther than pride. It really will. And that's another point. I will not connect up to someone who is still with pride. It's just, you, 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 ugh. it's just distasteful. It really is. People brag and, and they just feel full of pride. You just know everything under the sun. And you know what I'm saying? And I said it before, you're doing all this talking and have nothing to show for it. I just, I just, it just irritates me. It makes me itch. <laughs> And that makes me, and there's a difference between pride and confidence, okay? There's a difference between pride and confidence. Sometimes when you're confident, people confuse it as being prideful, but it's not, okay? Only God knows the, the, the contents of your heart, right? Um, and I said on Facebook a few days ago, I said, you know, we can tell by your behavior you need a, a therapist. I'm not being prideful, like, you need to say that. I wasn't saying that. Because to the pure in heart, all things are pure. But I'm telling you that you are broken. Hey? You see what I'm saying? A therapist telling you you need to have a therapist is not, um, it's just not, 
is is not an insult. If a therapist tells you you that, you know what I'm saying? We say we really say you need to get healed, sis. You need to get healed, bro. Like you just that's not how you do it. Healing. Instead of trying to go through life connecting with people, connecting with business partners, connecting with, with, with life partners, collecting relationships, and we can clearly see you broken. This over here ain't no ribs and brokenness over here. I'm just gonna put it all the way out there. Ain't no ribs and brokenness over here. Okay? <laughs> In the counseling session, we can work through that brokenness, but ain't no no ain't no connecting in insecurity and ribs and brokenness. Okay? This ain't the homeless, the hungry, the needy, or the <laughs> I'm just being honest. I'm just saying, you understand? If I got to work, everybody up in my house got to work. I'm just, woo, I gotta get that out. Let me tell okay, I gotta, okay, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you the story. I'm not being facetious, but I'm a single person, okay? And um, I love being single. I really do. I love me some me. I just do. Call it how you want. I just love me. But, you know what I'm saying? We, I think I'm a beautiful. You, I may not be your cup of tea, and that's fine. You have every right to your opinion. Doesn't make me no never mind. However, I had this brother try to come at me. Right? He's 33 years old. He's a little bit younger than me. 33 years old, still living with his mother, driving her car. Um, and I was just nice to the guy. I never like. I'm just nice to people in general. I'm not like, oh, you know, what I'm saying I would never do that. I'm just cool. And I was having a conversation with him, cool, cool. And he says to me, he says, um. I like to take you out to dinner. So I said, no, no. See, no, no qualification. No, I ain't gonna, no. Mm -mm. No qualification, just no. In the back of my mind, I was thinking, first of all, <laughs> you drive me. <laughs> you drive your mama car. She paid all your bills. You don't take care of nothing. What you gonna do, drive borrow $20 from your mama to take us out to the devil? It's a whole an entire life. Okay, <laughs> so I was like, in the back of my mind, I was, I didn't say what I really wanted to say because I didn't want to hurt his feelings, but the back, the back of my mind, I was thinking, you really, you really have good confidence in yourself because you tried that one. So I'm going to say all this to say, hey, this ain't, this ain't the feed the homeless, the needy, the greedy, the non-working, you can't keep a job longer than six months, you live with your mama, she paying your bills, she probably paying your car insurance, the devil is a whole lot. Every day, girlfriend gets up to work. Okay? <laughs> this is our number. I don't know how long I've been out at this today. Ain't no, no. Okay? So that's... <laughs> I don't even know where I was going at with the story. I just found it ironic. Some people have very good confidence. That was probably me. That's shady. God forgive me. I was just, I was really thinking. So you had to be honest with. Okay, hold on. You have to be honest with where you are in life and not be mad when people are willing to deal with. You know you a bum. You know you a straight bum. Come on now. That's just not. Come on. Bums and bosses do not coexist. I, they don't. They don't really connect real well. <laughs> Could you imagine if I went out to date on a date with? I would end up being. I would end up being his mother. I would end up being up to hurt his. The devil is a whole lot. Bones and bosses don't coexist. Okay. If I got to go to work, if I got to pay my bills, if I got to pay my card note, if I got to do all this, you got to do all that. Okay. A, a, instability is not attractive. <laughs> Oh, that was probably really wrong, y'all. <laughs> that was shady. But let me just say that I'm not friends with this person in any capacity in, in life. I'm not friends with them on Facebook, so I would never hurt their feelings. But I'm just saying, like, you have to be know where you are at this stage in life, okay? You just have to know that, <laughs> okay? So people who... People who <laughs> oh, I'm trying to laugh. <laughs> okay. Not at all. Not, no, no bums. Not a boss and a bum. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Oh, that probably, I don't even know where I was going at with that, but my point of, I, I do make with that is that these are my, there's some ladies out there that be like, woohoo, you somebody like me. Oh my God. Mm, no. That's all but no. Okay. And I have definitely qualifications that I have for when, uh, for connect, connecting in a potential relationship. I definitely have qualifications and standards, but everything that I, like I said before, for those who just came in, everything that I have. Everything that I desire, I already possess. So I'm not one of the people like, oh, you got da, 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 da. No, 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 I already possess these things. I'm just not trying to be carrying no dead old, no grown man boy. Okay, you're a grown man boy. Try to, try to go. Don't, don't ever try it again, but you try it. Anyway. <laughs> oh, okay, that was wrong. I'm sorry. I'm afraid for my strength. Lastly, 
People you should connect with. And this is for me. People who have the same spirit as you. People who have the same spirit as you. It makes things so much easier if they have the same spirit. Um, if they are driven by passion, by vision, by purpose, if they if they are driven, if they are, you know, if they if they had the same spirit as you, it makes it easier. Because again, two is better than one. And iron sharpens iron. We get together, we came in partners. Woo! God is good. It's it's amazing. It doesn't mean you don't have to sit down and have certain conversations, but it makes it just feels like a breath of fresh air. It's like, oh yeah, you do that, you do this, and, and then you both bring equal. A knowledge, skill, talent, and ability to the table, right? Um, oh, I gotta give my pastor this credit again. He said, Dr. My pastor named Dr. Kevin Williams, but he said, um, and it's uh, he, he must have read in my brain. I promise you, this is in my brain. He it just it was in my brain. He just he just coded my brain. I mean, <laughs> he said, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> don't connect with people who like you. Connect with people who are like you. And I'm going to say it again. Do not connect with people purely based upon the fact they like you. Connect with people who are like you. There's a difference. And he said, he said I don't have time to sit down and teach you certain things. I, I just don't have that kind of time. And it's true. Just because you like me does not mean I'm going to connect with you because you like I, Listen, I like me. I really do. I like me. I really like me. I, I love me. I like me a whole lot. But just because you like me does not mean that you I, that I'm gonna I'm gonna hang out with you. It just it just and it doesn't mean I necessarily have a problem with you. You know, at this stage in my life, I want to connect with people who who are like me in a sense of they grinding, they they hustling, they pursuing purpose. They do, even if you're doing something completely opposite from me, I respect people so much. When they're just passionate about their business or their ministry, what they're doing. I mean, we can just have, we probably don't have to talk all that often, but you just, I mean, you we we get it. So don't come, just because you like somebody, you don't mean they're supposed to hang out with you. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It, it was a, That's like high school stuff. Like, you like me, I like you, let's hang out together. Okay, okay. I, I really do like you as a person. And I'm, I'm pretty sure you like me as a person. Why would you not like a nice person? Because, you know what I'm saying? But what does that have to do with me connecting with you? That's like that the illusion of, of nice that I talked about. You want people to, to connect with because you you're nice. Well, that's it's great to be nice and it's great to be likable. But that does not mean because you like me, I'm supposed to hang out with you. Right? All right. Keep it moving. Um, we, we done, y'all. People who grind like you grind, work, work like you. When you're really pursuing a passion, it doesn't feel like work. It really doesn't. It doesn't. Sometimes it just, it just feels so good. It doesn't feel like work. But you still got to be grinding. You still got to work. And sometimes you have to have experiences of going through the place where, you, where it felt where it felt like work. Before you get to the work that's passion, that's that's what your vision is, that's what you love. A lot of times you've had to go through the experiences where you had places where you didn't like. Or you had to put up with that supervisor that you didn't like. Or you had to put up with that job that you didn't like. And you, you know what I'm saying? That was a process of, of matriculation to get to where you are now to appreciate where you are. But you got to be willing to do some work. So, and I said this earlier, I'm going to go ahead and say that again. Uh, some people are allergic to work. Some people are allergic to people who are in authority. They just cannot, you have no, they have no career path because they never stuck around long enough because they are allergic to, I mean, they just cannot submit to anyone's authority. But you want to connect in business, it doesn't work that way. You always have someone that, you know, it just doesn't work that way. Now, if you're allergic to work and I'm over here grinding, no, 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 I'm, no, okay? Um, again, teachable spirit, walking in humility, walking in wisdom. And this is for me. And I'm finished. I'm going to go home on these last two points. It has to be confirmed by the Holy Spirit. It has to be. Now, a lot of people don't know this about me. Okay. I, I, I do operate in spiritual gifts, but I don't care if I have met you for five minutes or I have met you for five, or I've known you for five years. If I meet you for five minutes and it brings it to my attention, I'm still going to pray and seek God on, on your behalf. Okay, it just and, and the gifts of the spirit operate, particularly when you're constantly dealing with people. We can have a random conversation, true story, y'all, not to freak anyone out. We can have a random conversation about nothing, about the grass is green and why the sky is blue. Absolutely nothing. But because the spiritual gifts that are on the inside of me, because I'm in the in the business of helping people work through their hurts and their, and, their, and their pains, I start knowing stuff about you that you don't know I know about you. I know five years from now you were abused or this happened to you. And the Lord just starts telling me. 
<laughs> sometimes when God tells you something, it's not always for you to go and share with other people. It's for Him to, you to know. And I'll give you an example. A friend of mine about 20 years ago, she's not on Facebook, but I know her always been kind of very fearful. We had just met, we connected automatically, we were friends. And um, and I just noticed things about her. And I, and I just, I wasn't asked, I just kind of know she was very fearful. And again, the Lord told me in a few seconds, she had been assaulted, like sexually assaulted. Okay, I didn't go asking her, why are you acting like that? Why are you so weird? Like, why are you just so nervous? But she ended up telling me, because we ended up being really great friends, later what happened to her. I didn't have to go sit down and have a whole conversation with her. I didn't know anything about counseling back then. This was years and years ago. And so I say all that to say, um, for me, when it comes to connection, you have to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you this recently happened, happened recently. Okay, this person does not know that I know their business, right? And it's not for me to know. It's for me to intercede. It's for me to know that the Lord said this is not the person for you to connect with. I had one person that, or uh, that that could have been a potential, uh, a, a potential connection in some capacity. I'm gonna go ahead, but you know, nothing crazy, but a connection. And I just remember the Holy Spirit begin to speak to me concerning the individual, and He didn't tell me anything bad about them, but He was telling me that this, 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 this is going on with the person. And even though they were a good person, this is not someone for you to connect with because they don't have the capacity for you right now. He told me a bunch of other things. Again, I won't share because it's between me and God. But this person would have been a distraction to my life because we're not equal partners. We're not at the same place. We just not. Okay, they start telling me all these things about areas of emotional hurt. So when the person was saying certain things that it didn't resonate in my spirit, the Lord was telling me, this comes from a place of hurt in this person. Now, mind you, again, I'm a counselor, so this is what I do all the time. I have clients come here, and I just say what their name is, and I start getting down with them. So this is what I do. So he said, told me in so many words that even though the person presented well on paper, that I was not too connected with that person, okay? And... <clears throat> I, I'm still working on it. I was the kind of person where I don't want to offend, intentionally offend people. So I remember just one, getting up one morning, one Sunday, and the person was on my mind, and the Lord, the Holy Spirit said to me, this is the exact words, he said, but Samaria, uh, why would you connect with that person? Why would you connect with that person? And I and I really didn't have a desire because I knew it wasn't God's will, but I, and I was like, well, Lord, I mean, they really are. A nice person. I just don't want to offend them. Because I really had no desire. I mean, you know what I'm saying? If God said no, I said, so no, we ain't got to have a whole bunch of God. He said, I said and he said, well, and I said, they, they're just a nice, they just a nice person. Like, you know what I mean? They just good for conversation. And he said, and the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, but why would you connect with someone just because they're a nice person? That's why I got that, that post about the illusion of being nice. Why would you connect with someone just because they're nice? If they're going to waste your time. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I won't tell you. I mean, he told me a whole bunch of stuff. And I said, okay, you, you're right. I'm going to be obedient because I got to be obedient. I just got to be obedient, right? And because I'm, I'm, I'm that person, I never want to intentionally offend anybody intentionally. Now, sometimes people get offended and you, is child, they got stuff going on and they got nothing to do with you. But I don't intentionally offend people, right? So I went to church. It was a Sunday morning and I had this conversation. It was signed, sealed, delivered. The Lord said, nope, it ain't, ain't going to, nope, don't do it. Right? Don't do it. I went to church that Sunday. True story, y'all. And the man of God, we had a guest speaker that day. When I say verbatim, word for word, the man of God preached everything the Holy Spirit put in my heart concerning that person and collaborated with that person. I knew it was like, it was like icing on top of the cake. I mean, I say it was not, it was eerie. It was so on point. It was like verbatim word for word. He started, and the first thing the man of God said was, nice is not a reason for collaboration. Neither is insecurity. Why are you here? And this is stuff that, I mean, the Lord had just, I was like, okay, God, I got it. It was like God had to bring it all home because I'm just that kind of a nice person where I would have just hung out with you even though I had no desire to, but I don't want to offend you. After that, it was a done deal. Now, again, the person does not know any of it because, again, as I said, I have to reiterate this. Just because God gives you visions, dreams, or downloads information to you concerning that person, it's not necessarily for you always to release. Sometimes it's for you to know this is not a good connection, right? So I said, okay, God, thank you. Bam. No, no more questions asked. It's a done deal. Think whatever you want about, about me. I, I don't give too high outlets. It's, it's a done deal. I'm going to be obedient because God has saved me from something. Period. I don't care if we was with be just friends. Period. Okay? However, there's another person that I really didn't care for. And um, this is a while back. They just, they just, their whole demeanor towards me in particular, they were just 
uh, just odd. It's just odd. And I know whatever oddness is going on, it had nothing to do with me. But I just didn't respect the person as a result of their odd behavior. I still don't, I, I, mean, I don't really care for the person. Let's put it that way. I don't dislike anybody. They're just not my cup of tea to hang out with. But then the Lord advocated for them concerning me. He just basically wanted me to pray and intercede for that person. And he started telling me other stuff that have happened to that person, how they had been gone through all this stuff, which I won't release, but they had gone through so much hurt and so much pain and so much rejection. What ended up happening was how they were interacting with me because one, they were intimidated by me. And number two, they really were still having the residual effects of being hurt. Now, one person presented, well, they, they was all this in a bag of chips. It was confirmed later. This person was nothing. The other person, God sees their heart. And again, even though I don't still don't connect with the oh, I'm done. Okay. Even like that, like that. I don't connect with the person like that. I knew that the Lord was telling me in my ear to pray for them. And their whole demeanor and their whole like weirdness was more having to do with their hurt and their pain and things. And I, I can't connect with you in, in that capacity as equal partners in hurt and pain. You probably need my counseling services. And I'm not saying that because that's a conflict of interest. I could find you a counselor. But but he told me he advocated for them as they that my perception of them was was off um, because of, of this, their strangeness. This other person was like, oh, they just, they just, they did wonderful. They just was like, child, it was like, it was like water. It was, it was, it was like an empty jar, nothing. This person comes off as an empty jar, but they're full of anointing and power once they get fully healed and set free. And so I say all that to say is that uh, if anybody that you work with, even if you don't operate in gifts of the spirit, it still should be confirmed by the Holy Spirit. And if you have to pray and see God's face, that's fine. But sometimes you don't always say, you have to have discernment because people talk and people, they, I mean, people, I, I said this, but people can sell you a dream. You would think they just the, the most also thing one day they just a hot mess <laughs> old people that look like a hot mess is not okay they look like they're a hot mess and they really were full so having god god's defined favor and seeking it by the seek god in all his ways and, uh, and he shall uh, bring it to pass right so now in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path excuse me okay amos 3 3 and we gonna go home with this how can two walk together unless they are in agreement that's the scripture, Amos 3, 3. How can people walk together unless they are in agreement, right? Emo emotional, mental, and spiritual agreement, right? All right, my name is Samaria Cole, y'all. It's been fun. Uh, you want to look at my website, www.samariacobra.com. You know more about my business, www.kingdomcreativecouncil.com. I'll see you later. This will be on YouTube, so check me out. And we will be back next week. Make sure you like it and share it, okay? Bye. Okay.